top 10 Eldritch Moon cards. Travis here, Travis Wizard with... Uh, MTG Lion. What, how's really it going? Excited. Yeah, we're really yeah. excited to uh, do this mm -hmm. over again. Yeah, and I'm a big fan of collabing with MTG Lion because, you know, I think... We have something. We have some things in common, but in some things we see the game from a very different most, perspective. Most in common, <laughs> we have our, our Reddit love, right? Reddit loves us. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we'll look at the game from different perspectives, which I think is great because we'll we will pick different cards to put on our list and have interesting conversation. Although this time, I suspect there will be a lot of overlap because the same cards that are really good to build around. Happen maybe, to be like yeah, maybe the most pricey cards in the set. Yes, I would although I've got a list, and I'm an, I, I know some of my cards are not going to be on your list. So why why don't we start? Um, would you like to go first? What is uh say your number five? Oh yeah, I'll go first. I really like Philia. Um, Ooh. I would put her at number five. Mm -hmm. I did get the ability to play her a little bit, play test her last night at F and M. F and M we did draft, but I was able to. I go ahead and play test her. There is a big difference between two and a white and one and a white. Um, and I noticed that tremendously when I played her. It doesn't feel the same. I felt like, oh, this is just a bigger, better version, but it's not true at all. Um, the older Falia, I feel like, was a lot. It's gonna is gonna be a lot better for modern and legacy, which the RDCs play. Uh, this new one, um, it fits very well with the human deck in standard. Uh, the green-white human deck. So if it sees any play, uh, it will be in that deck. I don't know mm -hmm. if it's modern playable. I really wish it was modern playable because I've been picking up a ton of these, uh, just stockpiling them. But um, I don't believe it is. Uh, yeah, I don't necessarily love it for modern. You play it on the play turn two. Um, it can really shut down fetch lands, uh, but that's the highest upside downside it just gets lightning bolted and then your deck sucks um but i mean also we'll, we'll see i know what we'll see play in standard probably more so as things rotate but there's so many crazy three drops like the competition at the three it, spot is very especially high. in modern two um that's a very competitive like two drops the difference between a two drop and a free drop in modern is huge mm -hmm. um yes at, so i can't I mean, I really do wish it was good, but I play tested it. Um, it's in my modern Adrazi mm -hmm. deck and my standard Adrazi deck. Uh, it does a ton, just not um, not enough. Mm -hmm. and that's very sad because it's close. It's very close, mm -hmm. but um, it's quite not enough. Yeah, well, it's still good enough to make the list. All right, my number five. I'm picking a card that is definitely not on your list. This is in my top five because it's super interesting to build around. Splendid Reclamation. Three oh, I don't green, even know what that is. Three and a green, rare, mass reanimate all lands from your graveyard to play. Oh, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. It's yeah, devastating it's like, summons, right? I saw yeah, that what do you do with it? Do you delirium yourself in standard and bring it back, drain them with retreat to Hagra? Is it a mana engine? Do you use it with Valakit? Um, or in modern, do you use it with uh, escape, uh, uh, do you use it with Lotus Cobra in modern? And uh, Greater Gargadon. That's not the card that is going to be worth much, but it's just a totally new effect, and a lot of people are trying to figure out what to do with it, and it's unclear. So that makes my list because it's one of the more, it's one of the cards that's provoked the most discussion, uh, the most new builds, the most unique. Again, it's not a financial pick at all, but um, <laughs> I, I like it. I like it. Yeah, it's, a it's, a combo, it's, a it's a combo card, mm -hmm. right? So it's a lot of creativity. Um, so I'll go with my number four. I was able to draft this card first pick, and it's as good as you know. It's as good as people make it. Elder Deep Fiend. That's. I mean, that'd be my number one. But uh, oh, okay. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> so yes. I was able to play with it. Um, so you, yeah, you can talk about it a little bit more. I guess we'll talk about it a little bit more um, mm -hmm. once we get to number one. Um, it's well, actually I'll pick surprisingly a, a new good. number one. But okay. so, yeah. <laughs> it's surprisingly good. Um, it, the merge is. A lot better than I expected it to be, especially in limited. Because um, you just have these janky dudes. I remember the one uh, clue maker. It's like two two blue. It generates a clue. Like once that guy's out, it's a two four. You play this for like one and uh, double blue, or you pay for like free, and then you just get this huge effect at you know instant speed um, and tap down all your opponent's stuff, and then just attack with a five six. Yeah, it's massive. 
It's huge. It has flash. It taps their lands. It taps their creatures. Um, I mean, we'll see. It's one of my picks for the Pro Tour. Jerry Thompson has this blue red list where you not only flash it in, but you flash back Kozilek's return and you sweep everything too, which is just stupid. Oh, yeah, I forgot yeah, that. Yeah, just outrageous. It is, a, you know, it is a Jazzy and I'll trigger the, right? That's yeah, good. so turn. we'll see it in standard, probably for as long as it's in standard. Uh, I, I that's hope a so. That's a good point. I didn't realize that. Do you think um, small side, uh, what's that card, the board sweeper that um, it does two damage? Kozilek's, Kozilek's return. return. Yeah, yeah. Is that card going to be more playable? Because it was not playable the first time around. Mm -hmm. And you're right. This one, I didn't even see that into action. There's That's people playing the deck. Clever. I don't know how good it will turn out to be, but uh, people were playing it. Um, tournaments today, actually. And so we will find out. But I think it will be good in a variety of decks. Yeah, I think um, it's going to be very good. I didn't even notice that yeah, in action. It also might see play. And this is it might be a good financial pick as well because... Uh, I'm not necessarily a speculator, but you know, uh, it's interesting. <laughs> um, I might because it has some life in modern. There's people who play Bant Eldrazi or Blue Eldrazi, and they like it. And then it, it could also be a build around. It's very good with like Eternal Witness. Um, oh yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of good things about it in modern and standard. It could be well positioned. So, I mean, I like yeah. the pick. It would be on my list. So I like the card a lot too. Um, yeah, to play with that, um, I'll, I'll make my number four, Decimator of Provinces. This is the green emerge. Oh, yeah. Yep. yeah, it's a mythic, not a, not a rare. So, um, Crater Hoof Behemoth was very good in standard. And I get the sense Decimator of Provinces is, is better, because it's cheaper. Um, mm -hmm. you, I mean, as nine emerge, you could, I could very easily see, see emerging it for five mana. It's a nine, nine trample haste. That gives your other creatures plus. It just seems dumb. It seems like training wheels. It seems too easy to win with it. Um, I, so you're a big fan of Emerge, right? So oh yeah. As a mechanic, it's an interesting mechanic, right? Because you accelerate, but at the same time, it's you still need a creature. Yeah, it it makes an interesting design issue for decks, but um, I mean these cards seem very much in reach. You know, you get a nine nine trample haste that pumps your team for five mana. It just it seems stupid. So yeah. um, I actually expect that card to... Uh, it looks like a big, dumb Timmy card, but hey, sometimes big, dumb Timmy cards are quite good and constructed. Could be wrong on this one, but I see it as a, an upgraded Crater Hoof for standard. How about modern? Do you think it's going to be played in modern over Crater Hoof? Because well, that's an interesting question. Crater Hoof is not really played in modern, so... Oh, and Legacy. Uh, yeah, and well, in Legacy, the cost doesn't matter as much because you're hitting it with Natural Order. And once mm -hmm. you have, like... Decimator is going to be better if you have, like, three or fewer creatures, roughly. If you have, like, four or more creatures, Crater Hoof will be better. So it's possible. Some people will play Decimator over Crater Hoof and Elves. Um, I don't know enough about Elves. I get the sense that a lot of the time they have, like, six creatures and Crater Hoof's way better. Um, but... Um, it just it's also a card. It's a mythic. It's Timmy. Uh, I would play that. Probably be played in EDH. EDH so, yeah, so. yeah, the casual formats. Yeah. All right, my next pick is Tamio. Um, I really did want to put Tamio higher, but the bant colors. I mean, right now it's very popular. Um, green white is the most popular deck. Mm -hmm. Blasting blue makes a lot of sense because of another card that you probably picked. <laughs> it's on I didn't pick the card. Oh, okay, I'll talk that, about it. Yeah, yeah, I assume that you picked you yeah. know that um, card, and it makes a lot of sense because you just throw in that you know you throw in a few new cards, um, you throw in Reflector Mage, which is always very good, and now you have a bat deck. Um, however, very strong. I just don't want to be forced into. It reminds me a lot of the Sarkon, the. Tamir Salkarn. Unbroken, yeah. Yeah, and underbroken, and that just saw no play, but it would pump out these huge dragons, and I was like, whoa, this is a token creator mm -hmm. that can create multiple tokens, um, huge dragon tokens, and it saw no play at all. Uh, that's what I'm feeling that people are doing about Tamil because I've seen her price mm -hmm. drop. Um, right now, she's around $17 in TCG player mids. Uh, market price, I guess, is what they call it now. Mm -hmm. um, and I would have imagined that she would be the most expensive card in the set, but she's not. There are two cards above her, uh, which I'll probably talk about. So how do you like Tamio? Do you think she'll see any play? 
Ye I think that Tamiyo, her price will even go lower, and then her price will go way up, because she's not going to see a whole lot of constructed play when Collected Company is in. Bant, Collected yep. Company is just too good. You might sideboard Tamiyo, but you Collected Company is just a way stronger 4-drop. It's an instant, so it plays well against Deep Fiend and other cards on the list. So I just don't see Tamiyo to see play. Well, Collected Company is in. However, Collected Company is rotating not that soon. And after that, we could easily see, and I saw Pascal from CFB say this as well, I agree with this, that we're going to see play sets of Tamiyo in Bant decks mm -hmm. after Company's gone. So, after Coco's gone, yeah. yeah. We might, Coco's so strong, you don't... Yeah, yeah in the next on, couple weeks from the Pro Tour, we might see no Tamiyo when the price goes down. That might be a good time to buy because, pff, I mean... Uh, oh, yeah, so what price do you... Like, just... just Throw me a number. What price do you think she'll go down to? I have no, 17 feels pretty low for a Mythic Planeswalker already, so I don't actually know. I just think that like uh, it's not a bad idea to hold on to them um, for the low price because uh, it feels like basically when company goes out, demand for Tamiya will go up, period. So I know. I absolutely yeah. agree with that. That's a very good um, point that you made. Um, okay. Let's move on. I'm going to pick a card. I don't know if this is on your list. Eldritch Evolution? No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't know. What the, I have no idea in the price in this. Eldritch Evolution is another card that is a really interesting build around one in a green, green, kind of mini natural order, like Birthing Pod mixed with natural mm -hmm. order. How good is it? Um, maybe not so good for standard, but it's definitely a modern card because modern decks can win on the spot with this thing by comboing off. Um, I it has to compete with Collected Company and Court of Calling in the kind of Naya Kiki mm -hmm. combo or um, Melora combo, and it remains to be seen if it will do so. But it's actually faster than either of those cards. So if you have a version of the deck that just wants to win as fast as possible and doesn't care about value, it's an amazing card. So that's a very exciting card because hey, I mean, you don't always get playable rares for modern from a set. Sometimes you get none. And uh, any of them, if you have one, it's probably making my top five. So um, I'm a big fan of that. Card. I actually like it a lot. For, um, so in I play a pod, a pod list deck, um, Malera mm -hmm. combo, and it makes a lot of sense because your Birds of Paradise or your Noble Hierarch, they don't really do very much for you. So if you can tutor for a Malera or you know a Kitchen Fink or whatever you need to complete your combo. Um, then losing that card doesn't actually do anything because you're just going combo off. So I like it a lot. It's uh, definitely a rare that I'm keeping my eye on. Um, it's really high price right now for, I think it's like $9 right now. And that's very high for a rare. I think it's unrealistically high. Yeah, that's for yeah a modern, for, especially given the print size of today's sets, um, it's deemed pretty high. Not necessarily a good financial pick, but a fun card to build around. Yeah, it's definitely going. To, I'm definitely going to put it in my modern deck uh, to try out at least. Mm -hmm. um, and now I'm going to get to the number two for me would be one of the more expensive cards, uh, Gisela, mm. the broken blade. Um, not much to say about her. I don't see you ever wanting to meld her. I feel like that's not the type of deck she would belong in. I mean, Bang Slayer Angel was a four of, and it was one of the strongest cards. The only downside of this card is uh, it's a legendary creature, so you can't play multiple angels. Um, I know stacking Bang Slayers just feels very OP. <laughs> um, and, you know, see, can in modern, she won't see that much play because she can just be lightning bolted away. Mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, Bang Slayer Angel has, you know, a five toughness, and it's a little bit um, harder to deal with. But, I mean, two and double white, flying first strike lifelink, um, additional, like, upside with meld. And it's right now at $17, a little bit over above Cameo. Mm -hmm. I believe they are more common um, than the Mythic Rare. So I've mm -hmm. got more of these meld cards or meld Mythics, mainly Bruna, um, than I got of, you know, the... Bruna's a rare, actually, I believe. I believe Gisela's a, a Mythic and Bruna's a rare. Oh, I, I, I think are you so. sure? I'm not sure, flip, but I think so. When you flip both of them, it makes a mythic Eldrazi. So that's kind of yes. weird. I believe that one is rare, one is mythic. 
the seven drop is rare. okay. Gisela is definitely mythic. Uh, uh, yeah, Gisela is definitely, definitely mythic. mythic. Maybe yeah. that's why I have so many. Um, yeah, Bruno's so a rare. Many. Yeah, you're right. Bruno's a rare, and then the meld card is a mythic. Mm. <laughs> so that's that kind of explains why I got more Brunos. Mm -hmm. I felt like they were a lot more common than Gisela, but I I love her. I think she's going to do well. The foil, so the foil version of her is very pretty because the back is foil as well. Um, so that's pretty cool, actually. Yeah, uh, people love angels. This one's really cool. People will try to meld. This one will see play in EDH. Standard might have some problems. That remains to be seen. Uh, if it doesn't see play in standard, it could take a hit. So. Yeah, no, it, uh, it has to see play in standard. Like it's uh, not going to see play anywhere else. Yeah, so. Except EDH or casual. I'm not actually sure it will see play in standard because you can remove it. Um, you can counter it. You can. Uh, it's it's Banslayer was uniquely positioned, so um, that's one I'm not. I probably wouldn't go all in on on, on that one. Huh? Because I, I, I it. you know I would definitely say uh, it's got to find a home in standard, and that's always a very dangerous um, proposal. Like if you pick something like Coco or uh, Nahari, that's fine. Because their homers are, are in modern, so and, you can and everywhere as well. Yeah, everywhere. Like, uh, ED, they are just very popular cards everywhere. Gisela, I agree. Her price will be solely dependent on standard, and then maybe some casual appeal because she's mm -hmm. a mythic angel. Okay, so uh, number. I'm gonna move on to my number two. Is your number one? Does it cost two mana? No. Okay, I, I can talk about this. Yeah. My number two, Grim Flare. Oh, okay. Uh, That's yeah, an interesting myth one. I mean, it's a mythic two drop. It's, it's no, the new Tomagorf, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is. Uh, when it, it has tra uh, it payoff is four four trample for two, which is insane. Yeah. But also, it enables itself. It controls the top of your deck. It sets up your graveyard. It's mythic for a reason, folks. This card, it's gonna slot into green black delirium and in, in standard. Um, um, I would play it in a green black EDH deck. Probably no life in modern, but I mean. The card is super sweet. Uh, it, it makes me want to play Delirium. Curve this into removal spell on uh, like Liliana and Mindwreck Demon. Um, I think that that deck is actually going to be quite competitive. And most of the, uh, the the important Delirium cards are from the newer sets, so it's likely to last for a year. So. Um, so I love Golgari cards, mm -hmm. and the problem I have with this particular card, it reminds me too much of you know other cards in the past from uh, Lot Lit Tro being mm -hmm. main one. And I always felt that the Tro would be very strong. It's just the colors don't work well. Mm -hmm. Black, um, black green for whatever reason has not been that great ever since um, Spirit Mongol Spirit. Um, well, there was the Jund era. Right. Yeah, but that has you know, that was, no, another color on it. Um, yeah. So are you saying that it would be played in a uh, black-green deck? Or do you think I believe it's going so. to be played in a Jun build? I, I've got a list. I mean, you're seeing them sprout up. You've got Sylvan Advocate and Grim Flare at two. You have Hissing Quagmire for the late game. Yep. Um, you've got Mindwreck Demon and Liliana. And you can top with either Gitrog Monster or Ishkana the Spider, which almost made my list. It seems like a very big brew. It seems like you're perfect for a, yeah. a rogue deck um, builder of some type. Yeah. And I think it has uh, competitive life now because of this card. It's like, this is the linchpin card. It's your insane two drop. You get it through on the third turn. It's going to be pretty hard to lose. But is it ever better than um, the Advocate? Yeah, if you connect, it's 10,000 times better. I mean, because uh, the Advocate doesn't look at the top three cards and like put the two worst that you need in your graveyard and like uh i mean advocates a four or five on turn six grim flare you connect in the third turn it's a four four trample right there and it's going to connect again the but that's next what turn. i'm always afraid of like that connecting part that's difficult to do sometimes in standard yeah it might not you happen parts, yeah that depend on hitting your opponent or hitting um uh -huh. it's sometimes you know i don't want to put my horse to that wagon definitely i've seen so many cards where, oh, Honored this card would be amazing. For certain, for sure. If I can, yeah. Oh, yeah, there's um, the um, High Arc, right? That other yeah. one. So, um, I think that you're right. So, I mean, uh, however, um, 
for one, it's a design constraint of the deck. You have to build with uh, removal in mind. And the second thing is, this card doesn't actually have to connect because it turns into a 4-4 without connecting. So um, it's a good late game top deck. And even if you never get in, you just have to wait till turn four, your mind wreck demon comes down. So now you think it's a Delirium is going to be um, really easy to activate? Now, yes. with the new cards? Yes. You also have Terrarion, which is the easiest artifact to get into your graveyard ever. Mm -hmm. So, um, I've been seeing lists, and I expect Delirium to be, if not, like, tier deck, like, very, very, very competitive tier 2. That's good. Uh, that's very good. Um, my number one pick is mm -hmm. the most expensive card of the set. Of course, uh, we picked for value. Uh -huh. um, Liliana, the last hope. Oh, okay. I like her a lot. I was able to use a one of my uh, opponents last night at draft uh, had her, and she was very good. Obviously limited. Uh, her plus one is surprisingly good. So she's one double black. Her plus one is up to one up to one target creature gets minus two minus one uh, until end of turn. That's removal. That's consistent removal. That's protection for her. Uh, it plus it's, one removal. Plus one, yeah, and it bumps up her loyalty. Uh, her loyalty, starting loyalty, is free. So just that alone, um, I think, is like almost good enough. Her ultimate with the zombie thing, that's kind of, in my opinion, I don't know if that's a great ultimate. It feels weak. It, it feels like it's going to take a, lot, a long time. And when you ultimate and you're doing that much stuff, then I feel like you should um, get rewarded a little faster, I know, I guess. But C overall is probably one of the strongest cards. A minus two is uh, put the top two cards of your library from your graveyard. Then you may return a creature card from your graveyard to your hand. And that's minus two. Um, so you can get some value, some card draw, some card selection. Is she Liliana of the Veiled? Absolutely not. Right? I'm not Liliana. even convinced she's worse than Liliana in standard, the, the old one. I mean... The plus one, like the sacrifice ability, would not be so good right now against uh, the co the company well, it, decks. It gets just, the uh, tokens yeah. and the pod, and you know, like people want. Yeah, um, but Liliana Veil wasn't really that great in standard. Um, it's true. She fell to below twenty dollars at one point um, in standard, and she yeah, was she's not. She's a modern I mean, card, really. Yes, yeah, so you had Delver. Um, you had Delver was the number one deck, and it didn't play any. You know, it's blue, white Delver was the number one deck with Geist. Um, but this one I like a lot. I like it a lot. Um, there is a huge difference between uh, one double black, a free mana Planeswalker, and a four. I think that's what people really don't get is that she comes down and turn earlier yeah. than most Planeswalkers, no, three, like Gideon. There haven't been many three mana Planeswalkers. Yeah, but if you look at... And they've all been the, insane. The one Nissa, right? People looked at her and initially you look at her as like, oh man, it's just producing 01 tokens and it's, you know, okay, it gives plus one, plus one token uh, counters. This card sucks. But enough time, enough tokens created, enough uh, creatures removed, you just get value. And that's what they are. They are value planeswalkers. So I'm extremely excited to um, pick her up. I'm definitely looking forward to maybe picking up at least one of the San Diego Comic-Con cards. Have you seen them? I the have, zombie. and they look awesome. Yeah, the zombie planeswalkers. The only one I want is Liliana. I uh -huh. care less about the other four. Um, but hopefully I can pick up one of those. I, I like her a lot. Um, she is pricey. and I think she's around $25 right now, $27 uh, TCG mid. Um, so I don't know when's the best time to pick her up. I have no idea on that, but it's a good pick. She'll be good. She's a little bit underrated and standard. Um, I've seen a lot of lists for the Pro Tour that have her in there. So, um, uh, if I mean, if she's in multiple of the top eight decks in the Pro Tour in the next couple of weeks, it's hard for a card to go over twenty-seven, uh, regardless in in a modern set. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, my number one card, I'm picking this for competitive, and for what I, we're going to see it everywhere is Spell Queller. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, that human. Yeah, three mana flash. Uh, uh, yeah, it's $10 actually right now. Yeah, yeah. counter a spell. It's just, ban you know, Collected Company is now a counter spell. Uh, you know, you play a Gideon in response to a Collected Company, you put in a tireless tracker and a Spell Queller and counter your... <laughs> it's just, it's stupid. It's a stupid card. 
it's going to define standard. I think it's you're going to have to every deck is going to have to pass the spell quower test. Every card has to be evaluated against spell quower. It's going to be good in standard and not just bant, uh, but also blue white and perhaps in like esper control. Um, it's definitely I don't know if it's a great EDH card because counter spells are not quite as good there. Uh, I'm I'm not sure on it for modern. If it it does things in modern, that's when it will really take off. I, I'm not sure. I think it has a chance because, well, I don't think it will be ubiquitous, but I cert I would be shocked if this thing didn't see play in modern. Um, yeah, it dies to Lightning Bolt. Okay, Vendillion Click dies to Lightning Bolt. Vendillion Click is not nearly as good a tempo play as this card. So It is very good. I, I like it a lot. Um, I mean, it's an interesting card because it fits that human deck. That already that Coco deck that already exists, uh, and I'm telling you, I get you know I'm pretty sick and tired of playing that at my F and M. It's it's all you know the grinders play. They all play the same deck. It's, it's not green, going away hands. anytime soon. It's the same deck list. I mean, now Coco gets move, rotated. <laughs> yeah, now they're gonna move over to Bant and then be slightly different. Um, yeah, but there's no um, on a side note. Like, what do you think about standard right now? It's not very creative. At least at my F and M. All the top players, they play green white tokens and I get our green white and now they're gonna play Bant and just add this card to it and it's gonna be even more OP. There's room to be creative. There's room to not be creative. People choose what wins. I mean, yeah, if I was gonna say you want a guaranteed win, play Bant, play Green White, play the white red aggro human deck. But I mean there's new control decks, Elder Deep Fiend spices some things up. Delirium spices th things up. There's a lot of depth once you start to dig down to tier two, uh, tier 1.5 and tier two. You know, all it's just there's just the nature of the people who show up to Magic tournaments. Um, but they're this gonna is like F and M, you know? I, I it's annoying, more, definitely. It's all green, white, and my F and M, and it's like the same deck list. Um, it's a uh, little, you know. I I mean, that's why I would much rather draft. Yeah. It's a little bit better. Than I think standard is fine. That's just human nature. Like, uh, is that a new thing that everyone's playing the top <laughs> net deck? True. Not really. But that deck's going to be even even uh, harder to beat now with um, the new cards that are coming in. Um, yeah, it's. Uh, I, was, I was hoping that they would rotate out right when Coco goes away, but it looks like they have some replacement pieces. I know exactly. Uh, I, I was hoping it would go when the uh, Fetch Shocklands went. But they figured out the mana base and it <laughs> continues. Out, yeah, how they yeah do it. I mean, Collected Company rotates and you just slot in Tamiyo. It's like, ooh, big downgrade. <laughs> you know? So, uh, yeah. uh, Bant, is, Bant is in a safe place for a long time, I think. Yeah, I think Bant is, uh, if you had to buy one deck right now to play for a while, it would be Bant. Yeah. Um, um, it seems like it's going to be one of the stronger decks. It'll uh, be hurt by rotations, but it won't go away. Yeah. All right. I mean, so, that yeah. was, uh, I guess, our top ten. Do mm -hmm. you have anything else to add, Travis? I'll post this on my uh, video, uh, yeah. on my channel. Yeah. If you're watching from my channel, go follow MTG Lion. I'll put a link up on the uh, screen. If you're uh, watching from my channel, uh, follow Travis, and I'll have a link, link uh, to your channel too. Uh, Travis Wizard. Yeah, and thanks. Travis Wizard. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I love doing this with you because you know we don't we don't have that much overlap. We look. At oh things, no, we don't. <laughs> yeah, we look at things differently. And it makes for interesting conversation. So um, I look forward to doing this again for the next set. Yep. And, and every other set. Yep. In the comments, let us know what you think. Yeah. All right. Take care, MTG Lion. Bye, guys. Take care.